right. Well, welcome to Roots of Reality Experiences. I'm joined by Dr. Joseph Usinski, who is a professor of political science at the University of Miami. His research focuses on public opinion and mass media with a focus on conspiracy theories and misinformation in American politics. Lastly, Dr. Usinski is also the author of several books and articles on conspiracy theories. So Dr. Usinski, thanks for coming on today. Thank you for having me. So uh, how did you first get interested in the world of conspiracy theories? Um, well, I wish I had a better story for it. <laughs> but all I can say is that a colleague of mine at University of Miami uh, knocked on my door one day and said, hey, I've got this idea, conspiracy theories. And my <laughs> initial response was no. <laughs> and this was about 10 or 12 years ago now. And I said, no one cares about this. I said, yeah. there's a couple of conspiracy theories like birtherism or 9-11 yeah. trutherism that people are paying attention to. But as an overall topic, political scientists aren't working on this. Academics right. aren't paying much attention. So nobody cared. And I said, this would be a waste of our time. Um, <laughs> but he sort of twisted my arm. And eventually I said, yes. And um, I guess the rest is history for me now. That person and I did a book together, and then he went back to doing normal things. But I'm I, I'm seemingly stuck with this forever. Yeah, I don't think uh, I think your field of choice has just got a little bit more popular uh, over time. So I mean, I would I would like to say that I was prophetic and I knew that the topic was going to become, but there was no way for me to know, and it was just sure. something else to do. Yeah, and and I'll I'll tell you, I mean, there there was very little academic or um press attention to the topic until around 2015 when it just blew up and now it's uh a, you know a big issue for the media for politicians for academics and yep. I, ha I happened to get in early but it was completely by accident yeah i mean that seems like uh yeah kind of my understanding as well because I remember the only place I really heard about people kind of looking into conspiracy theories and, and trying to like debunk them or whatever was coming from like the skeptic community. Um, but generally uh, university professors weren't focusing much on that. So um, it's interesting to see how things have changed quite a bit, I guess. I mean, some of it, if you were to ask me, why did it become as big as it did? Yeah. I mean, we're in a place now in academia where there's new studies coming out every day from yeah all over the world and from all sorts of disciplines. And it's been hard for me to keep up with the literature because it's growing so fast. I bet. Um, I think what happened was when Obama came to office, there was a bunch of people who thought that he had faked his birth certificate. Yep. And that idea so angered people on the left, you know, particularly journalists and, uh, university professors that they started investigating that so that sort of primed the pump a little bit yeah and when trump entered the race in 2015 2016 he was just spewing conspiracy theories so then at that <laughs> point yeah you had sort of an infrastructure built of people already polling on conspiracy theories but then trump just brought it to the fore yeah. And then it became that the media had to cover the topic because elites were engaging in that sort of rhetoric. And um, it gave uh, researchers like myself um, sort of a purpose for doing it. You know, now right. this is a big issue. So yeah. um, it, it, it's, you can clearly see this in the media coverage of the topic. If you go back and do a, a word search for conspiracy theory in like the New York Times, there's very little coverage of the topic up until around 2015 when it just starts blowing up and you can see that reflected in a whole lot of media sources yeah i think yeah once especially politicians or people aspiring to be politicians started to get behind conspiracy theories that seemed to be taking it to the next level because i think before like you had conspiracy theories uh you know about various politicians or whatever prior to that the clintons and the bush family uh, but it seemed like it was just kind of like random people. Um, and yeah, I guess that makes sense with with Obama coming into power. And then Trump just have this explosion of, yeah, you know, basically politics has become conspiratorial at a whole new level. 
Yeah, and it's largely because of Trump, not solely Trump, but right. Trump. Yeah, he definitely big driving force for it. So. Yeah, and if you, if you go back in time, you will find that mainstream politicians engage in conspiracy theories once in a long while. Yeah, right. Like, what did Hillary Clinton say about her husband's troubles? Well, he's the victim of a vast right wing conspiracy. Right, right. You know? and <laughs> um, when Obama started his reelection campaign in, in 2012, he said, "Oh, Obama's the victim of shadowy oil billionaires who are out to get him." Yeah. You know, so they, they they come out once in a while, but they're not the primary talking point for mainstream politicians. They're normally talking about normal party and ideological issues. Whereas Trump didn't wasn't really a normal party or ideological kind of guy. So yeah. he said there's an underserved market out there of people who just hate the system and don't trust it. So he gave them the rhetoric that resonated with them. And that's how he built his coalition. So once you have political elites talking that way, now mainstream journalists have to cover it. They have to cover that rhetoric and cover the topic more generally. Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of spur, both of those things sort of spurred more academics to get into it. And then, you know, once you have lots of research coming out, that also spurs the media coverage of the topic. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's become a fascinating subject. I'm curious, you know, what's your analysis in terms of why people will believe in conspiracy theories in the first place? Because obviously there's a people that are, you know, trying to get into power, uh, like Trump, who will use conspiracy theories. Um, you also see this, you know, in, you know, in places like Russia, you know, where the regime there is constantly promoting conspiracy theories. And that's happened historically, too, with lots of authoritarian regimes. But what makes individual people so susceptible to buying into a conspiracy theory? So this is the funny thing, is that we often think in those terms, like, why do they believe conspiracy right. theories? If there's some special reason. Yeah. For those beliefs, like, oh, because they were dropped on their head or because you know, there's <laughs> yeah. something wrong with them or yeah. they purposely like believing stuff they know is false. Sure. It's not really that. I mean, the, the, the simplest answer is this. People adopt conspiracy theories for the same reason they adopt any other idea. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we all have beliefs about the world, about why events happen, about why circumstances are the way they are. We're always searching yep. for truth and trying to find explanations for the things we observe and people will happen upon these ideas the same way they might happen upon anything else right so what are in just general terms what are those forces well generally if you have leaders that you trust yep you know and they espouse conspiracy theories then you're probably going to adopt those conspiracy theories sure well, not because they're conspiracy theories but because it's you support that person, yeah. Well, trusted yeah. sources telling you this. Um, if you have a worldview in which, you know, you go to your window, you look out, and you just see things, and you're like, wow, events and circumstances are likely caused by shadowy conspiracies pulled off by people I don't like. Yeah. Then anytime you come in contact with a conspiracy theory, you're going to be likely to adopt it, right? And then another issue is our group identities. So we tend to think our group, our own groups are upright and <laughs> virtuous, but the yeah. other groups are always, you know, liars and cheaters and immoral scumbags. So of course, you know, if we're going to accuse somebody of conspiring, it's rarely ourselves, it's always no, the other guy. That's right. Never, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but that, but those forces are sort of operating on all sorts of ideas, not just conspiracy theories, but what we tend to find is those are the big explanations for why people adopt, um, these ideas yeah i guess people just generally have a sort of pre-existing notion of the world and then you know whatever fits that they'll tend to believe so because i i mean it seems to me like a, a big part of it is just about also bring comfort to your own beliefs um and so you know if you hear something that sounds good to you then you're more likely to adopt it without questioning it uh because it kind of fits how you already see things. So this is the kind of confirmation bias factor, I suppose. Yeah, think about any sport sporting event. Who complains about the umpires and the referees? <laughs> That's the right. yeah. It's the losers, right? Yeah. And politics is in sports. So it's not shocking that after an sure. election, you're going to have some chunk of people saying it was rigged. 
Yeah, well, yeah. Because it's easier for them than going into the mirror and saying, well, gee, maybe our candidate wasn't that great, or maybe we didn't go out and work hard enough to turn out the vote. Who right. wants to do that? <laughs> so no one wants to admit they're wrong yeah, or, or failed. Or... Yeah, so, so it's easier for some people because it makes sense to them to say, well, it was rigged. It was yeah. rigged against us, right? And, and what we have right now with views by Republicans about the 2020 election is a combination of um, Democrats rigged it. Yep. And that's being driven by the fact that Republicans lost. And um, a lot of those people who would naturally believe it was rigged have a conspiratorial worldview. So they're just primed to see conspiracies. Yes. And uh, Trump and his allies in government and in the conservative media have been saying for years, even before the election took place, yep. the elections were rigged. Yeah. So it's it, it should not be a shock to anyone that you've got, you know, between 50 and 80 percent, depending on what poll you look at, of Republicans thinking the election was rigged. Well, yeah. duh. That's, that's right. They've kind of laid the groundwork for that. So I think it's also interesting, though, like, it seemed like from your research that you you talk a decent amount about how this is really a bipartisan issue when it comes to conspiracy theories. Um, you know, typically, I think both political parties like to assume, you know, oh, it's that side that's the you know crazy one, <laughs> but, but they're both very susceptible to it because it's it is like a sports team like competition, like my team versus yours. Um, that's exactly right. So if you think about the forces I was just talking about, I mean, there are people with conspiratorial worldviews on both sides. And there, there are, of course, scholars who disagree with me and say, no, it's more on the right than the left. But even when we find differences between right and left in terms of how conspiratorial their worldview is, the differences are rarely huge. Yeah. And over time, they tend to even out. So both sides are susceptible. And all it really comes down to, if you want to get some idea to spike, is having the right circumstances and having the elites pushing that idea yeah. in a sustained way. And that's what Republicans have right now with 2020 voter fraud beliefs. But, I mean, there are all sorts of conspiracy theories um, that you can list off that Democrats believe more than Republicans. You know, it's all the ones that accuse Republicans of conspiring. Um, and there are a lot of conspiracy theories where there aren't very big differences between the percentage of the right and percentage of the left buying in. So it, it, it's it, the one place where I find an asymmetry is where uh, the left tends to really believe that they're immune to this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We're the sane ones and it's, yeah. it's the Republicans who are the crazy ones. But um you look over lots and lots of conspiracy theories and lots and lots of polls, you'll find that the, the, that the differences, whatever there are uh, between right and left, aren't huge. It's just they believe in conspiracy theories that accuse the other side. So how concerned are you then about sort of how conspiracy theories have gone from just being, you know, kind of a few people believing them to massive numbers of people and affecting, you know, they're not conspiracy theories that's like, oh, you know, uh, you know, something about UFOs or, or something like that, where it doesn't really have huge consequences for society, but instead it's now become about elections, uh, but massive number of people, candidates believing in rigged elections and the political consequences for that going forward as a political scientist, like how do you view that and the future of American politics? So there's good news and there's bad news. And I'll give <laughs> yeah. you the good news first. All right. <laughs> and I'll say that the good news is that things in terms of public opinion aren't worse than they have been in the past. So our attention on conspiracy theories is just that. We're paying more attention. Journalists are writing more about it. Academics are researching it more. Um, but it's not the case that individual conspiracy theories are believed more now than they have been in the past. Okay. And it's not the case that people are more conspiratorial in general than they have been in the past. So I've just uh, completed a study that I have coming out um, in the next few weeks where we look at, I think, 50 some odd conspiracy theories, some of which we tracked over decades. Um, 
and we're just not finding big increases over time. Instead, yeah. most conspiracy theories are believed by people who are disposed to believe them, and that's about that. Um, so stability tends to be the norm. Okay, It's not an ironclad rule, but it tends to be the norm. And there's more conspiracy theories that are flatlining over time than going up, and there's more going down in my research than are going up. Okay. Right? okay. So it's not the case that the beliefs are just going through the roof. The, the, the country hasn't become a bunch of conspiracy nuts. Okay. So what has changed is that we've had Trump mm -hmm. um, engaging in this rhetoric. We've had um, his supporters who are already prone to these beliefs, you know, buying in. But, but if you look overall, uh, the landscape is very much the same and the same forces are in play that have always been in play. Okay. I mean, even social media hasn't really made a big difference. And there are, I can get into that in a little bit, but yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of reasons to suspect that it wouldn't do what a lot of people say it does. Um, so, so that's the good news. Things aren't worse in terms of what the public believes, generally speaking. Yeah. The bad news is that things have always been bad. People have always been prone to believing nonsense. They've always been prone to just buying what their trusted leaders say, whether it's true or not. Right. Um, and it, it, these beliefs are, are more widespread than people in previous decades believed or wanted to admit. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, that's a major problem. Yeah. So, so uh, political scientists have largely been ignoring this for a long, long time. And if you look at typical research into American politics, it focuses on typical mainstream left-right politicians and left-right political issues and the effect of conservative liberal ideology and Republican-Democrat partisanship. So very mainstream stuff. But that doesn't fully capture the American public. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to test this, next time you get in an Uber, bring up politics with your driver. Oh, and I'm, I'm willing to bet they are not yeah. going to have normal, constrained Republican or Democrat yeah. issue positions. Yeah. They're going to have ideas about aliens and all sorts of things. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and so that's true. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing is that yeah. populist, conspiratorial ideas, conspiracy theories are incredibly widespread. But yeah, our elites, have, our our elite media, and our elite political leaders have generally kept them off the mainstream political um, docket. But once once that got opened up by Trump and some others, now it's it's seemingly everywhere. But 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 it's the same people buying the same stuff, right? Yeah. So so it's just we weren't paying attention. Yeah. Uh, so when people come to me and say, "Well, things are so much worse now," I say, "Well." You know, I will agree that they're worse in terms of having a president who That's right. who's like, promoting him. Yeah. 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 You know, having Trump trying to overturn an election. Yeah. That's bad, but that's Trump. And it's bad having a party apparatus in service of that because it's anti democratic, but that's leaders. Right. So, I mean, my fear isn't so much what the public believes right now, it's what our elected leaders are, are doing yeah so that's really bad um but that but that's probably not a consequence of the beliefs being higher than they were in the past it's a consequence of brazen elites just wanting to use this rhetoric for their own ends and act democratically undemocratically in their own interests um you know so so the typical conversation would be something like this like oh my god things are so much worse now in terms of what the public believes and i say well worse than during the red scare yeah. Worse than when we were crushing and drowning witches for supposedly conspiring with Satan? Is it worse than that? Yeah. Um, and they say, well, maybe it's not that bad. And, and, and so, you know, it could be the case. I would like to think in general society is getting better and we're probably getting smarter in our scientific and critical thinking um, and scientific thinking are increasing over time at a, at a pace, you know. <laughs> Uh, but I think we're better off than we have been in decades, centuries past. Yeah. Um, but these beliefs are still out there. We are neck deep in stuff that is either patently false yep. or, or 
it just can't be shown to be true. Yeah. And that's always been the case. And it's not a function of social media and it's not even a function of Trump. I mean, go, go put on cable TV if you still pay for it and you go flip through and you will find paranormal caught on camera, <laughs> yeah. haunted house, the ghost, yeah. finding Bigfoot. Guess what? They still haven't found him. Yeah. Um, the History Channel, which I thought was about history, is alien. Yeah, the, yeah, the pseudo History uh, Channel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Animal Planet, which I thought was about real animals, seems to be about Bigfoots. And their biggest show ever <laughs> was about the Navy conspiracy to kill the mermaids with super secret weapons. So, yeah, stuff is everywhere, right? So to just pick out conspiracy theories now and say, "Oh my God, I can't believe people believe things that aren't true." It's shocking to me. Well, where have you been? Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I I completely agree. It's it's. I think, yeah, it just seems like more people are aware of it now because of like journalism, you know, paying attention to it because it hits, you know, the politicians or politicians are actively promoting it. That's that's been a game changer, um, politically speaking. But yeah, if you, I mean, yeah, way before Trump, it's been just you could easily find. You know, basically anyone on the street that would be willing to tell you some random conspiracy theory or whatever that they believe because people just just in general you know will believe in basically anything it's it, you can find anyone who will believe in almost anything in this world i think um and there's lots of different things that people can <laughs> latch on to and and promote like it's some uh you know religious belief so uh the idea the ideas aren't new either so that's yeah. the thing. A any conspiracy theory that seems new is just a continuation of something that's probably already been out there for a long, long time. Like QAnon shocked people. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my God, the idea that that uh, there's a bunch of pedophiles in the deep state working against the president. But that was the plot of Oliver Stone's JFK movie mm -hmm. that came out 30 years ago. Yeah. I mean, the Joe Pesci character was a pedophile, and he was supposedly one of the people that pulled the trigger and killed him. <laughs> so it's not even new. It just, <laughs> and and yeah. most of the stuff that QAnon adopted was stuff that had just yeah. been turned around forever. When conspiracy theories about 5G causing COVID came out, people were, oh, my God, how could anyone believe that? But right before the pandemic, people were saying 5G gives you cancer and cooks your brain. So all of this stuff is just like a, a Mad Lib. You remember yeah. those Mad Lib games? Yep. People, yep. Oh, you know, they write in the new noun or the new verb, um, but it's the same theory over and over again. So the conspiracy theorists aren't very creative. They just rehash everything. Yeah, it's, I guess, yeah, conspiracy theories just evolve a little bit more different details or um, or taken over by a different group that will add their little spin on it, I suppose. Kind of like remakes of movies, I guess. Yeah, I mean, three years ago was the MMR vaccine causes, you yeah. know, whatever. Now it's the COVID vaccine causes whatever. And it's the same arguments with the same crappy evidence by the same people, <laughs> right? So so there's, there's nothing new. Yeah. So it's not about the theories themselves. It's about the people. Mm -hmm. It's the same people adopting the same stuff over and over and over again because that's how they view the world. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, my view is larger that we need to get away from the focusing on the theories themselves and more on the people. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense because, yeah, I mean, that's it's it's people, and I suppose the just whether it's the lack of interest or the or the lack of of uh, ability. Um, you know, via the education system or whatever to identify, you know, what's correct or information or not. I guess that's something that seems that we've been failing at as a society for basically forever. Um, but now it's affecting politics in ways that it hasn't before. So um, I mean, it's, a nice, it's a nice story to tell ourselves that, yeah. oh, all my relatives who believe crazy stuff only do so because they saw the wrong video on YouTube or got yeah, captured by the right. algorithm and dragged unwillingly down. Right. The yes. It's, it feels good, right? Cause yeah. I don't have to blame the people. I don't have to blame my relatives. I don't have to blame yeah. my friends for their beliefs, but we're blaming the wrong things. Mm -hmm. It's because we're, we're just trying to avoid some, some, it's easy to blame 
Mark Zuckerberg and Twitter and YouTube and yep. Facebook for these things and say they did it because I'd rather do that than actually blaming the people. Because once mm -hmm. we start blaming the people, then we have to start looking introspectively at our own beliefs and why we believe what we believe. Yep. Right? And I mean, there's always a tendency to think everyone else is a dupe, but never ourselves. Everyone else yes, falls victim, but, but yep. never us. But, you know, we don't want to have to open up that little box we all carry with our own conspiracy theories or dubious beliefs in it. You know, yeah. know who's the other guy, right? And, and, and once we have to start putting the blame on things that are intrinsic to all people, then it opens up the door for us having to give ourselves a good look in the mirror. Nobody wants to do that. So yeah. it's easier just to blame social media or whatever. What do you think then that we can do as a society to help combat uh, sort of the role of conspiracy theories in you know American society and politics in general? I mean, here's one thing is that we shouldn't overemphasize their role. First okay. Of, I'm not going to say they don't have a role, but what I yeah. do want to say is this, is that it can be the case that people will adapt conspiracy theories as justifications for things they would have done anyway. Yeah, it's true. Right? So it's not always the case that someone, is, you know, adopts a conspiracy theory about vaccines, then refuses the vaccines, yeah. but, would have got, but would have got the vaccine otherwise. Right, yeah. It can be the case that someone will believe true things about the vaccine and then not get the vaccine. Right? So what I find in my surveys, there are people who will say, you know, uh, people who get vaccinated still get COVID, so I'm not going to get vaccinated. Now, that's true, mm -hmm. right? Now, they're bending the the evidence right. of what they probably, of what, what actions they were going to take anyway. Yeah. But, you know, just giving people the right set of facts doesn't... No. <laughs> the right outcomes. Yeah, no, absolutely not. No one no one actually cares what, what people have to say if it's going against, you know, what they already believe, so... <laughs> Um, so, so that's one. So, yeah. it, you know, the things that I think need to be done if we want to fix the problems we have now is, is we have to not elect people who are going to gauge in conspiracy theories, <laughs> right? Yeah. Then the question is, how do you make that happen? Well, um, my one simple plan I have is this, and it's not like I've been able to test it. Sure. Um, and I would be interested to hear what scholars of political parties and elections would say, but I think that the parties need to do a better job of keeping people off the ballot, mm -hmm. right? So if somebody wants to run under the Republican or Democratic banner, then they should have X amount of experience and um, pledge to uphold certain things, right? Mm -hmm. So that would keep the, you know, so I'll give you one, one example. I mean, I think if someone's going to run for president as, as a Republican or Democrat, the Republican and Democratic National Committee shouldn't be obligated to let them take part on their ballot or to let them take part in the um, debates. Yeah. On TV. Um, and they could set a rule say, so, okay, you have to have served as representative, governor, you know, senator, or, or, right. or had X amount of years in some sort of public office. And that way you keep the Trumps and the Marianne Williamses of the world off the yeah. ballot. Right? And they could run if they want. They just don't have to do it on a major party. Yeah. So a blanket rule like that... Um, I think would probably do a world of good. Mm -hmm. um, and that would keep out the people who are not ingrained in the system, people who don't have experience um, like that. I mean, there was no reason for Democrats to have Marianne Williamson on the debate stage talking about cosmic forces, right? Yeah. Just like the Republicans really didn't want Trump on their debate stage saying all the things that he was saying because he really wasn't a Republican, really wasn't a conservative. And, you know, if they had the blanket rule in place in in advance, that probably could have could have preemptively held off. Yeah. Trump co-opting the party for his own purposes. Sure. 
Well, but again, I I put that forward, but I don't think there's any silver bullet simple solution to yeah. this. I mean, I, I wish there was. If there was, we would have done it by now. But um, people's beliefs are all over the place. People aren't neatly Republicans or Democrats. You got a lot of people who just don't like the system, and it's easy for them to be led by a Pied Piper who comes along and plays their tune. I mean, that, and that seems like kind of like one of the the big issues is because it's such a kind of a uh, political waste dump when it comes to the American views of, of the system and, and political politics today that just makes it so easy for people just to be dissatisfied um, in the first place. It seems like, you know, to a certain extent, Trump was also just a product of the environment and, you know, that the fact that he could go blow through the Republican, you know, primaries and get elected president, you know, suggests that you know, society as a whole is is really struggling to wrap its head around, you know, what to do um, to prevent, you know, people like that from going into power in the first place. But yeah, there's no there's no easy answer out there, and I think we were all blindsided by it. I I also think that there are there is a lot of blame to be put on mainstream media and mainstream politicians. Sure. Like, I'll give you just one example. I mean, a lot of politicians um, have put forward crazy claims about sex trafficking in this country. Yeah. Based on very lousy data. And there were some Congress people claiming that 300,000 kids were currently being sex trafficked in the U.S., which is a yeah. vast, vast overestimation. Right. It has been fact-checked and found to be, you know, for... Pinocchios. <laughs> right, we don't know what the true number is, but it's nowhere near that. Yeah. So, um, but when QAnon comes along and says, yeah, there's mass, massive sex trafficking rings, a lot of people can buy into it because, because mainstream politicians have been pushing this idea for a long, long time. Right. I mean, I lived through a satanic panic where they, in the 80s and 90s, where they thought that all the daycare centers were run by devil worshipers and there were police in, in many towns and cities saying, you know, be on the lookout for satanic ritual abuse. People went to prison for long periods of time for fictitious crimes that never happened. And it made the news. And the news was running with these ideas, even though there was no evidence for it. <laughs> right? So this is all, you know, it's easy for this to be revived because people already believe it. And we see Republicans running with it with it now. I mean, all this talk about Disney grooming children to be trans or sexualized or who knows. Right. Um, I mean, people on the right are now pushing this, like people like Charlie Kirk at Turning Point, and um, there have been people attacking Disney and in the Supreme Court hearings recently talking about child grooming and things like that. I mean, this stuff is out there. They're not convincing anyone. They're just playing on what's already there. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And, and the government has, has been complicit in this because they've made exaggerated claims. And, and all the time, when they go out and they do uh, busts of adult prostitution and things like that, they always make these grand claims about saving sex slaves and everyone's going to get jail for sex trafficking. And you come back the next day after the big press conference and say, will, will anyone be charged with trafficking? And the answer is no. The answer is no. Um, because, because they're making these big claims, but it's what are we normally talking about? Adults making money, engaging in voluntary, consensual sex. Mm -hmm. right? And that's not, the public isn't so into arresting that, but when you call it trafficking, Right, right. All of a sudden, oh my God, you know, but but these claims are, are widely exaggerated and they're highly manipulative. Yeah, it's a it's a mess. I <laughs> I mean, it must be interesting, uh, you know, in your situation especially because if you're studying this for a living, um, you know, like it must be interesting just interacting with people because if you ever have conversations about what you do with just random people, I'm sure that they'll start talking about like. Yeah, people believe some weird things, but this is true. And yeah. you know, or, you know, what, what's it like for you to be like focusing on this field and then still living in a society that is still you know, filled with you know lots of beliefs like this? 
Well, it's interesting because everyone's concerned about conspiracy theories. They're just concerned about everybody else's. Right. <laughs> yes. Right, because they're, my ideas aren't conspiracy theories. My ideas are conspiracy facts. Yep. Yep. The other guy believes the, all the yep. dumb stuff. That's right. <laughs> are false. So, so that's, that's a lot of what's going on. Just pointing nobody, fingers and... Nobody wants to have an even-handed definition of what counts as a conspiracy theory, and nobody wants to apply that definition evenly because the ideas that they believe they want to be true. Right. They don't want to be examined. Want to yeah. Them. They don't want to castigate those ideas as conspiracy theories, only other people's ideas. So there's no easy way to deal with the problem because at the end of the day, everybody's fine with conspiracy theories as long as they're the ones that they like, right? Everyone's yeah. happy to engage in them as long as they're the ones that accuse the people that they don't like. Nobody so, accuse us. Well, you're a conspiracy theorist and we need to censor you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, what can you do, I guess? So, <laughs> um, do you think that uh, in the political system, you know, after Trump, that, you know, obviously we don't know if he's a run again in 2024 or not, um, but do you think that the momentum for having uh, conspiratorial beliefs about politics and elections, do you think that will continue um, for future candidates for talking about how, oh, I only lost because it was rigged? Or do you, you know, what's your uh, thoughts on the trajectory of American politics and that? So you don't have to be Trump to do what Trump did. No, exactly. Right. So I think a lot of people saw his path to power. And, you know, they may want to emulate it, right? And we've seen a lot of candidates jump into races like QAnon believers and what other people engage in conspiracy theories the way Trump has because it works. And cul Trump has cultivated a, a coalition that other politicians can now draw on for support, mm -hmm. right? As long as they play the tune that resonates with that coalition. So... Uh, I mean, I, I see no reason for it not to continue. But again, this is all entirely dependent to me on elites being willing to do it. If leaders are going to do it, then they're going to do it. That's that's the thing to me is we got to we have to just stop the leaders. I don't see a good way of convincing people not to be conspiracy theorists or not. No. To yeah, that's that's pretty tough, especially because I just seems like. You know, as you've talked about many times, how it's just kind of finger pointing between two sides, both with, you know, they're susceptible to believing in something as long as it supports, you know, their, their political goals. I mean, to a certain extent, the system is also kind of just built for conspiracy theories to thrive because it is like a, a, a game like system where it's this team and this team, you know, just going after each other. Two parties sort of bashing each other's heads in. Um, well, that's part of it. So that's yeah. one part. Right, so you have people who are just attracted to the idea of beating the other team. Yeah, doesn't care what you win. They don't care what you win. No, no. They want to beat the other team. But there's another issue to this. That's just the left-right issue. Another issue where there are people who are a little bit motivated by that, you know. But their more their bigger concern is something like it's not teams that are right and left. It's teams that are us, the good people, and them, the powerful, corrupt elite. Yes, that's right. Well, you, you see that a lot amongst, I think, independents that were never really Republicans or Democrats, but voted for Trump um, because this idea of going against the political establishment. Uh, and I still see that. Yeah, I think I, I, like social media will see lots of people that sort of identify as independent, but like, you know, Trump supporter. Um, and I guess you get that also with like, you know, the, the Bernie Sanders faction of the left. And so it's just... Yeah, that's right. There's a kind of a, a top and down dynamic there as well. Um, I mean, Bernie Sanders, to me, wasn't very different than Trump. No, just, that's, that's yeah, no. Sanders was a lot more constrained in his rhetoric, where he really yeah. only has one conspiracy theory. Yeah. And, and that was that the 1% has rigged everything. Yeah. Right. So, so during 2016, when you had Sanders, Clinton, and Trump still in the race, I mean, Sanders was going on saying, oh, the 1% have rigged everything, and it's all rigged, and the government's rigged, and the economy's rigged. And then Trump would say, well, the election's going to be rigged. And journalists would freak out and say, well, that's so terrible. He's destroying our democracy by saying this. But isn't it a bigger and worse yeah. claim 
say everything is rigged than just one election? Right. Right. Does Bernie's claim sort of include that elections would be rigged by the one percent, and and after he lost, I mean, he did play with that idea. You know, yeah. he, he did go out and intimate that it, that the primaries had been rigged against him. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, that's I remember that. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it, it's also interesting because you can see, despite being you know sort of on what people would consider the opposite ends of the political spectrum. Yeah, Trump supporters and Bernie Sanders supporters would agree on on many different things. Um, it just depends on you know, I guess what aspect of that topic that we're talking about. Uh, but yeah, the whole idea of battling elites is kind of you know both their thing. So that's that's sort of the issue. And no, I don't think that anybody really wants to sort of see how close their ideologies are to just straight out conspiracy theorizing. I mean, take the yeah. right. A lot of thought on the right is, well, government is a danger because when it gets too big, it infringes on personal liberty and we have to be watching out for a government who just seems yeah. to naturally want to take our rights. I mean, that easily becomes conspiratorial. Government's yes. out to get you. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Left, it's, it's the same thing, just usually a different villain. It's big corporations and the moneyed interests are controlling everything and they want to keep you down and therefore we need government to protect us, right, from, from these scheming um, moneyed interests. Um, so they're just, it's the same claim, just a different villain, usually. And, and, and they're sort, sort of getting at the same thing. And that's not to say that all... You know, Republicans or Democrats are conspiracy minded, but right. But but there's something very close that gets to that. Like yeah. the private sector is rigged, and we need government to protect us. Government is going to come and violate our rights. That's why we need more power left in the hands of the private sector, right? So, um, you know, I'll hear people like Marxists, you know, too, and they say, "Well, I think your definition of conspiracy theory is too broad because it includes Marxist thought." <laughs> I'm like, well, well, too bad. <laughs> sorry that's, you don't like it <laughs> yeah it's 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 yeah it's including it for a reason yeah it's not surprising and of course you know just looking outside the u.s i mean this is pretty much a global problem as well where a lot of the conspiracy theories in the u.s are also shared abroad and um you know whenever i go abroad i hear people talking about conspiracy theories as if they're you know in the u.s and uh, so it just kind of floats around do you think that uh, conspiracy theories have spread internationally more due to social media or, you know, since people that's, are... a, that's a good question. Um, I normally don't like the word spread because I'm not, yeah. it sort of, ta it, it sort of puts a lot of, um, it, 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 it seems to make the case that the ideas go like a virus where they just right, yeah. person to person infecting everyone that they come in contact with. And that's not really how this works. Sure. Um, I will say that 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 it's probably the case that ideas in different countries can escape those countries easier than they have in the past. But they're probably mm -hmm. only going to convince people who are already predisposed to those sorts of ideas. Right. That makes sense. Right. So um, I, one thing I like to say is that, you know, America is exceptional in many, many ways, but our conspiracy theorizing is not one of them. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So it's yeah. as bad here as anywhere else, and it's probably worse in a lot of places in the world. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Here, it's just it's hard to show because the places where I think it would be the worst are places where we can't poll. No. Yeah. And then you run into a problem in those sorts of places where it's like, you know, if you're believing conspiracy theories about the North Korean government or Cuban government or Russian government, and you mm -hmm. live in those places, then are you really a conspiracy theorist or are you just smart? Right. Because my yeah. guess would be if you don't believe conspiracy theories about what your leaders are up to, then you're a dupe, right? Yeah. Well, you're, yeah, I mean. That's by the mainstream, you know, party line. Yeah. Um, but if you believe they're out to get you, then I would say you're probably right. Well, here it's a little bit different because a lot of the conspiracy theories we have probably aren't true because our institutions are very open and porous and yeah. our our epistemological authorities are, you know, they make their claims with open data and evidence and anyone is free to challenge those. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I think that's very much true. I mean, from traveling to like four parts of the Soviet Union, you get a lot of people 
who've just always lived in a society where the government can't really be trusted. And so, you know, just naturally it's like, okay, well, you know, it makes sense that you would be, you know, thinking like this, you know, many times we'll also though think that basically no government anywhere can be trusted. So that, you know, they, they'll have the same conspiracy theories that Americans will have about their government. Um, and they'll adopt those too, because it just fits their own experiences in their own country. So, but that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. It's just, it's, and it's different. It's difficult to compare between countries yes because where you are determines what you're going to believe right so and any particular idea may have more or less salience at any given time right yeah so if 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 people if powerful leaders in the u.s influential leaders are pushing conspiracy theories you know let's say conspiracy theory a in this country then a lot of people will buy into it but if it's not relevant in some other country, then that one's just not going to take off, right? Yes, that's they'll, right. They'll believe something else. I think one of my favorite examples of this is, you know, polls tend to find that very few Americans believe that the moon landing was faked. And I usually get between 5 and 10% of Americans. Yeah. Right? So, the, I mean, that's a fairly well-known idea, right? It's been around for a long time. Um, but not a lot of Americans buy in. Why? Well, because it's a point of national pride. Yeah. If you yeah. go, you know, I saw a poll of France where they said, yeah. do you think the Americans faked the moon landing? And you have almost 20% saying, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Try this. Yeah. Try like Russia. I mean, there's a lot of Russians, I think, that don't believe the moon landing happened. So, well, um, because it's an opportunity right. for you know, the U.S. is a conspirator and we don't trust. Yeah. Them. I guess thinking of like conspiracy theories that seem to sort of gain traction in different places which kind of have a global uh, a global perspective on would be like so i guess like the new world order or something like that because it's like oh secret elites controlling everything that happens in the world which people can all get behind because it affects them everywhere um doesn't matter what country you're in i guess people can get behind that idea but i've, I've heard that mentioned in different places basically anywhere yeah so it's not like people run around you know, picking up every in any conspiracy theory, it's they're picking up ideas that make sense to how they already see the world. They match what's going on now. They match their group allegiances and their their various worldviews. So, to me, this is all a story about people rather than the theory. Yeah, very interesting in terms of their perspectives. So, so what are you currently working on in terms of research then? So right now I'm. <laughs> just doing a lot of polling on what people believe and trying to figure out from those polls, you know, what are the factors that are associated with those beliefs and um, what might be the outcome of those beliefs. So um, that's mostly what I do now. It's just, I, I yeah. poll and then I put the data and. Yeah. Uh, well, it seems like you're going to be busy for a long time. So there'll be never ending conspiracy going on so <laughs> yeah i don't know if there'll be a point in the future where i get sick of it maybe <laughs> all i do and i have ideas to do other things but i'm not really incentivized to do other things right this this is going to be a a mainstream topic that people are are concerned with for a long long time um, sure. so in the, and even after like let's say things normalize in the u.s and we get normal leaders we'll still be looking back saying what happened, mm -hmm. you know, and how, how can we prevent, you know, some of these things from, from happening again in the future? That's true. Yeah. Everyone's going to want to analyze this for, you know, basically forever. I think it's going to be such an interesting topic because we're in such a uh, interesting historical moment. Yeah. It seems like there'll be never ending books coming out about it. <laughs> so I mean, that's, that's a funny thing. I look back now and it's like every election, you know, yeah. prior to 2016, everyone said, this is the most interesting and weirdest election, yeah. most consequential, and everything's so different now than it ever was in the yeah. past. And now all those claims seem so stupid. It's yeah, just, it's like, yeah, you just wait, yeah. <laughs> you look before 2016, and you're like, everything was so normal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, hind yeah, in hindsight, yeah, we'll see. I mean, yeah, who knows what's going to happen in the next election. So, um, but yeah, hopefully they're better. But yeah, we'll just have to see. Um, what's the best way for people to keep track of your research and everything? 
So I am on Twitter or at Joe Yuzinski, um, and that's probably the best way to follow me. And if you go to Amazon, I got a couple books there. Yeah. Um, that are that are uh, some of which are pretty cheap or even used. Um, or there you go. Up. Um, so, um, there is material available and on my webpage, joeuzinski.com, I have all my recent op-eds and some of my recent research. Perfect. Well, thanks for uh, taking the time to come on and chat about this topic. It's, uh, pretty fascinating and, uh, seems like it'll be relevant for a while. So, <laughs> well, you're very welcome. <laughs>